How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Killer. Welcome back to Divine Deception. This is going to be an exciting one, I think, because we have a Jade Key for the first time. Our first ever Jade Key, and we're very much at the end of this story, which was culminating very interestingly. But we don't have the key for that one yet. But what we can do is jump back into Mercury's story and finish it with the Jade Key that we have. Let's do it. Under the gun. There's really nobody I could blame for this situation other than myself. The instant I realized what was happening, I was instantly awash with an acute sense of just how dumb I was. I mean, nobody should be in this apartment. If I thought I heard movement, why would my response to be just walk out there and look for the source? Obviously the sound would mean someone had invaded my apartment. Likely someone with ill intent. Probably a threat. In this situation, I should be hiding. Oh. It's Mercury. He's got the mask because he killed Thane. He strangled him and then took the mask, I guess. So Mercury is Vels? I should be desperately thinking of possibilities. The last thing I should do is blindly walk out of the restroom without a care on my goddamn bones. Stupid. So stupid. Stupid on a lot of parts, really. I mean, just relying on the fact that nobody should be able to find this apartment as a security measure? How simplistic was that? My whole deal was supposedly supposed to have been a dozen backup plans, half a dozen what-if protocols. I should have had some extra security in my apartment, beyond the shitty lock provided by the hotel. Well, even still, it was dubious if such security would have actually helped me in this particular situation. After all, facing me down was unmistakably, un was unmistakably mystery man, the same mystery man who was working with Governor Raja. Oh, that's the one that they saw at the in the forest. Uh, that um, Vels and whatever saw meeting with Governor Roger that Locke sent them to and Locke and Mercury are the same person as well aren't they likely the same mystery man who had tried and failed to kill me that night I failed to swindle Odin Dysman definitely the same mystery man who would have killed Polly Dysman were it not for my interference there was enough to know I was in real shit because this is a professional assassin facing me down in the past I'd survived based solely on the element of surprise but the one who caught, caught with my pants down this time was me. I tried instantly to take in as many details as I could. The door to my apartment was closed. This is the first time we've actually seen um, Devon's face as well. The window was covered with blinds. To get here, Mystery Man probably entered the normal way and lockpicked my door. In that case, did they know about the sewer entrance? No, they couldn't have. They shouldn't have. They must have come up the normal way. In that case though, they should have been caught by the camera. Seen by the staff. I mean, surely they wouldn't murder me, right? Not when there was evidence linking back to them. However, that conviction of mine crumpled pretty quickly. Obviously, Mystery Man wouldn't be that sloppy. He was an assassin. He could have gotten around that any number of ways. Maybe he used a fire exit to get in the, in the window of another apartment. Maybe he used a disguise. Who knows? I should focus on details I could ascertain. Each one might be the difference between life and death. How was the Mystery Man dressed? Like before he was wearing a grey hoodie. However, the hoodie wasn't zipped up, nor was the hood up. He was also, also wasn't wearing a face mask, so I got a pretty good look at his face. His chin was unkempt, his eyes red. This is the face of someone unhinged. Someone who had not been getting enough sleep. Someone in a manic state. He had a phone still sticking out of his pocket. Had he just been in a call with his employer? Most importantly, I saw the gun he was holding. It wasn't an assassin's gun. It was a standard six-shooter pistol. No silencer. I saw how unstable his finger was. Was clutching the trigger, not in a stable way. The real danger of the situation continued to dawn on me. Oh, this guy was not okay, and he planned on shooting me dead. He was ready to do so any second. If I didn't come up with something fast, I gulped. A second had passed since I started doing my analysis. My mind was speeding along at unnatural speeds. Even still, I had no indication of how many lengths and seconds I would get. I needed to think. What could I do? How could I get out of the situation? My mind defaulted to physical solutions. Unfortunately, there weren't many to be found. I didn't have any weapons in close proximity. Additionally, I was at the exact worst range for this sort of confrontation. I wasn't close enough to the man to make a move. He'd be able to shoot me far before I could make any contact with him. However, I wasn't far enough where the bullet would have longed to travel. If I tried to dodge, it would be laughable. The man would just slightly move his hand and shoot me regardless. What other options did I have? Could I somehow block the bullet? Possibly. Unfortunately, there was nothing on me that served that role. Nothing within close range that could serve that function either. Let's start doing some desperate desperation thinking. Maybe getting shot was fun. 
If I move in the right way, get shot non-fatally, I can survive. It would take a second to load the next shot. I'd use that time to close the distance, fight off mystery men, get the gun from him, finish him. Voila. Yeah, right. I think I might have gone for this option had I not run into this guy twice before, but those encounters were enough for me to know how impossible the scenario was. This guy, despite being bested by me twice before, was very good. If he shot, he wouldn't hit a non-lethal area, and even if he did, he'd easily be able to beat me if I tried to fight him. Hell, he'd win the fight even without my gunshot wound. It was at this point a very frightening realization was beginning to dawn on me, a terror that moved through my bones. There was nothing I could do. If this man wanted it, I would die right here, right now. Which meant functionally I really only had one option. Talk him out of it. <laughs> Luckily for me, it was an option I was reasonably good at. Who... Who are you? Okay, great. Step one was handled. Mystery man was open to talking. I had to use this. I can explain. Slowly I tried pacing to the left. If I could just reach my... Freeze. Mystery man held the gun higher, right at my head. Don't you move another muscle. One wrong move and I swear to god I'll blow your brains out. I won't hesitate. Shit. Whoa, whoa, relax. Uh, take it easy there. I'm not trying anything. You got me right at gunpoint. You clearly know what you're doing. I'd have to be insane, frankly, to try anything. So, you know, ease up. I'm not easing up anytime soon. That's fair. That's very fair. Okay, then, let's talk. You strike me as an ambitious guy? I've got a lot of knowledge. I think I can be of help. Hmm. Start telling me what you know. After that, I'll decide whether it's actually useful. Maybe if you're lucky, you tell me everything I need. I decide I don't shoot you right here and now. Sure thing. It was clear from the tone of his voice that he was lying. He had no intention whatsoever of letting me get out of this alive. His plan was simple. Extort me for all I was worth, then put a bullet between my eyes. Well, that was fine. I didn't really care about that, to be perfectly honest. What matters was that he was deciding to give me a chance to talk. That was an opening. All I needed to do was change his mind by the end of the conversation. Sure, I currently saw no path, clear path toward that. True, if I wandered off the subject he wanted me to talk about too far, he'd likely shoot. True, if I slipped up in any way, I'd likely be as good as dead. Details, details. I'd survive worse. Just need to focus up and find the way out. You asked who I was, right? Well, that's a more complicated question than you might first think. Uncomplicated. I was. I was getting to that, I swear. Okay, so... How should I put this? I wasn't posturing for time. I was actually trying to figure out how best to explain when I didn't know this guy's motives. What could I assume? Considering everything, his thoroughness of it all, how he appears now, I decided to make a bet. Ultimately, there were two most likely motives Mystery Man might be acting in the name of money or ideals. He could just be an extremely well-paid killer, or he could be a reasonably paid killer who legitimately believed in Aisha's vi vision. My biggest clue as to which motivation might be correct was the overheard conversation I caught in Aisha's office. I concluded that Aisha would not be taking that tone when talking to a pure contract killer. I am working for the people. The people? Who's the people? I don't mean literally. I'm not literally employed by, well, anybody. But I'm here because Panthea is broken. You've, you have to see that, right? Olympo is run by devils. The duets run the streets. There's death and tragedy and anger all around. I've come to this city to try because I knew. Because I was told that this place was broken. And now I'm doing the best job I can to fix this city. In the way that only somebody like me could. You want to know who I am? I'm the person trying to help. You're annoying as hell is what you are. I'm not asking for some bullshit. I'm asking for a name. I'm asking for details. Now try again. Who are you? Mystery man was on edge. However, the anger wasn't stemming from some deep hatred. Not right now. It was a product of a type of confusion. He wasn't actually close to shooting me. In fact, he was further from that than ever. I still had quite a bit of leeway with him. Why don't you try telling me? Huh? You're quite knowledgeable. I've seen you around more than once. You broke into my apartment. You're looking for a name? Guess. You... Come on, just go for it. It'll be fun. I just want to know how observant you are. Lock. At first glance, I'd pick you as Lock. This is what this apartment suggests at any rate. This is the type of place a low-rate scammer would occupy. So if I had to guess on one name, Lock would come up first. But? But you definitely don't just lock don't look just like Locke. And your eyes, they're silver. Silver eyes are pretty rare. But Laverna, that detective, she has silver eyes. Very observant. What else? Your arm tattoos. They match Vels. They're likely like a perfect match. And considering I have trouble finding a picture of Vels, I kinda doubt you're able to copy them perfectly. Right. Quite right, in fact. Okay, so who are you? You haven't said anything wrong. I am Locke. Just like I'm Laverna. And I'm also Vels. 
I'm a lot of people. If you're looking for a name though, you can just call me Mercury. Mercury is the fake alias I defaulted to, the one most of my false papers were connected with. I named all my phony identities after tricks to gods. A little on the nose perhaps, but it worked so far. Besides, Panthe was full of strange names, so nobody even had better than I so far. I'm all those people and more. I'm a hidden entity, changing Panthea for the better. I'm like you. I tried reaching out to Mystery Man, however instead of absorbing anything I was saying, their face was sour. They didn't quite get what I was saying. I couldn't exactly blame them. It was a pretty confusing concept. And I'd done my job carefully. But that doesn't... How can you be three different people? You've got different jobs, different personalities. I mean, surely. Like, I didn't see any of you at the time, at the same time, but still I... Wouldn't have, wouldn't I have... He kept trying to run into contradictions, but each time he tried to bring something up, he was at a loss for words. Made sense. If he looked into Laverna, looked into Locke, looked into Vels, then he probably knew more than most, how none of them had traces leading back to him. Yeah, now you're starting to get it. I admit it's a bit much at first. Certainly confusing. But it's just my process. It's how I work. When I decided to infiltrate Panthea, I knew I needed different identities to work with. One, is, one I could get in good with the police. One that would be good, we used as the face for my scams. One that could navigate the street to, streets of Panthea, get the on the ground info. It was a complicated process to be sure, but I'm a pretty thorough person. I made sure to get, give each of my identities a completely different wardrobe with ample makeup to boot. They all had different postures, different personalities. Each one of them had a distinct voice. That made sure that I could be anyone I wanted. After all, people primarily use voice to identify others. Over the years I've gotten pretty good at acting. Of course, hearing everything back to back like that, you can probably place that they're all coming from the same person. But that's also a big part of it. I made sure that each of my identities rolled with different people. I tried to avoid people who knew one of myself bumping into another one of them. And if it had to happen, I made sure to obscure things with darkness or excuses. Maybe make the encounter brief. I had a lot of tricks and in truth, I came pretty close to screwing it all up more, than, more often than I care to admit. But in the end, I made do. Honestly speaking, Things had gotten off the rails more than once throughout my crusade. Eris was someone I had come up with completely spur of the moment. I was still amused that the cops actually bought the twins line. That phony phone call probably helped me reinforce things somewhat. And that Thane persona, well I completely just fell into that ordeal. Wait, what? How can he be Thane? He killed Thane. We watched him kill Thane. We watched him run away from Thane, be shot at by Thane. But looking back, it ended up being pretty useful get. That's... You're insane. Possibly. You need to be to pull off what I've done. But that's just it. If I could fully commit, treat them all as different people, stay consistent with the lies, I could create a false reality. And that false reality gave me a power over every other person in this city. The power of information. Oh come on. Surely this was unnecessary. Maybe. Absolutely not. I was hunting a multi-faced opponent who used, made use of proxies and lures, someone wise to the workings on every level of Panthe. Only by throwing out a similar amount of disinformation was I able to tear rifts in the fabric that they weaved. Tch. Fine. You pulled the wool over the eyes of somebody else, everybody else. Well, guess what? That only got you so far. Now I know. And guess what? You're three of my bullets. So thanks. You just made my job a whole lot easier. Uh, you're welcome? <laughs> you know... I wanted to gather all five of you in a single room and end things in a single blur. I thought that goal was impossible, really. Three out of five isn't that bad. <sighs> this is kind of what I feared. My explanation could buy some time. But if at the end of the day the mystery man still wanted to kill me, revealing the truth would only do me so much good. I felt confident there was an escape sequence possible. This guy was unhinged, but the fact that he was talking so much clearly indicated that he was willing to accept new information. Willing to have his motivations warped. But I still couldn't find a strong angle. For now, I need to keep myself alive in the short term. Find new things to talk about. Whoa, whoa, let's hold on a second. If you kill me now, things are gonna go bad for you. That pistol? I can see it doesn't have a silencer. Which means once you shoot, a lot of people are gonna come running here. You may not have seen it, but there's a camera set up over there. Without moving my arms, I pointed over toward the door. Leave now, you'll definitely be caught. There's also a camera down at the front desk, as well as a witness. I'm aware. Shit, so he did enter normally. I'm sure soon enough, this murder will catch up with me. But your apartment has a window. I'll be able to get away for now. I'll live long enough to complete my mission. That's all I care about. Oh, come on now. Doesn't that seem, uh, a bit short-sighted? It is. But you made it so that I didn't have a long-term future. 
Shit. Hey, hey, is this about the Aisha thing? Look, I still haven't put out those photos. You totally can... I stopped in my tracks. This is probably an argument I could win. But I thought ahead a bit, and I realised that it probably wouldn't lead in any direction that was particularly helpful. In fact, it would be more likely to cement my fate. I need another out. Okay, okay, wait. You said I was three of your bullets? But that pistol holds six bullets. So doesn't that mean there's another three targets? Two. Two targets, okay, well, still. As you know, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty resourceful individual. I bet I have a way to, for you to get to your other targets. Don't shoot me right away and I can help with that. Good. Let's do that. Good. Cool. Now just tell me who your other targets are and I can help out. I could tell Mystery Man was hesitating for some reason. He was clearly unwilling to give me information of any kind. Ugh. How unhelpful could he be? Whatever. I'll just fill in the blanks myself. Doing so might win me some points. Okay, I can guess if you'd like. Laverna, Locke, Vels. Well, you tried to kill two of them. I'm not quite sure how Laverna ties into this. Maybe she's just a general nuisance? But if the common denominator is people you've tried to kill, well, I can think of at least two other people you failed to finish. So then are the other two bullets Krish and Polly? Mystery Man just nodded. Okay, good. That felt like the most obvious answer, but I couldn't be certain. Alright. Well, guess what? Normally getting to either of them would be super hard. But I can help with both targets. Yeah? Yeah. I haven't written it anywhere, but I do know where Chris is staying. And Vels has a good rapport with going on with Polly. I could definitely lure him out for you. And what do you know? You can get your five target party just like that. Isn't that exciting? Hmm. Is that right? It is. Okay then. Let's start seeing some proof. We can start with Krish. Tell me where they're staying. Sure. Will do. Totally. But before that, I just got one little question. Yeah? I didn't actually have a question. I was looking for an off ramp. Complying with Mystery Man had brought me some more time. But just playing into his hands would only get more people killed. If I actually wanted to change anything, I need to start making affirmative steps in this conversation. The question was, what should those steps be? Think. Think. The problem was, I was running into a lack of knowledge on my opponent. This is the perk of being an unknown, I suppose. Hard to get a read on them. If I didn't know who they were, how could I convince them of anything? Especially when they didn't want to be convinced. I needed an in. I needed a hook. I need to figure out just who Mystery Man was. Come on, think. Considering all the information I'd gathered, shouldn't I have some idea? I knew he worked for Aisha. Maybe that was the place to look. But no, I needed something better than that. What information did I have on Mystery Man? Ah, Polly's reaction from when Laverna interviewed him after the assassination attempt. He hid it better later, when Vels bugged him about it, but back then, Polly was still frazzled. He clearly knew the attacker, but didn't turn on him. Who could fit that bill? Rather knowing what I knew about Mystery Man, what connection could he have to Polly, but Polly may recognise him, but wouldn't sell him out. After another moment's thought, it came to me. Back when Laverna was investigating into, into, investigating the info theft, Art slipped up, referring to a brother who was interested in magic, that clearly wasn't Polly. Additionally, in the text logs I found on Polly's burner phone, Art implied that Polly had failed a family member in the past, a sibling. The conclusion I reached was slightly wild, but it was the only thing that made sense. The question, ask it. You... You're a Dysma, right? Mystery Man didn't look quite as surprised as I would have thought he'd be at my revelation. However, the reaction was still unmistakable. I'd hit a bullseye. Right. The third Dysma brother. Figures. Odin's really a shitty parent, huh? Could I ask how you guessed? Let's just say having a bunch of identities to play off each other eventually play pays off. Polly recognised you, but didn't turn you in. wonder why that is. It is, perhaps, because he feels guilty. Guilty about the time when you needed his help, and he didn't reach out. Is it perhaps related to your current status as the Forgotten Dysman? Odin's a real bastard, I know that much. And I can't imagine you've had a good life to end up where you are now. You were at a low point, and neither Art nor Polly reached out to help you. And I kind of felt good. Odin, the psychopath father that he is, decided that you didn't live up to his legacy and tried to cut you out. Am I right? Odin's real sons are Art, Polly, and... Devon. The name's Devon. Devon, huh? Nice name. It's okay. I gotta say, I feel, real, I feel bad for you. Growing up with Odin, with Art and Polly, it must have been real rough. But I guess in a weird way, Odin disowning you helped out, right? Helped out? How do you figure? I imagine someone so obsessed with legacy did his best to erase you from as many records as possible. For an invisible man, I think that nasty. I noticed a slight smile across Devon's face. Not bad. You're right. I turned Odin's greatest insult into one of my greatest strengths. Clever. Real clever. Sorry. 
Huh? Some Devon dies. You figured it out? Good for you. What does that matter? What does that matter? Devon, you're killing me here. Not yet, I haven't. You, you're funny, that's funny. Keep talking. Right, look, so growing up in a Dysma household was, I can only imagine, a complete hellscape, right? Odin was an abusive as shit father. Art was a complete, a competitive dick. Holly was a selfish dick. He was surrounded by opulence and wealth, and yet all that did was make you feel more inadequate. Am I getting any of this right? Devon didn't respond. I took this as a cue that I was more or less reading things correctly. It all sounds super warranted. I mean, your hatred of them. All three of those people were scum. I get separating yourself from them. And even still, you probably harbour a deep resentment toward them, right? Toward Olympo? Toward what it represents. I mean, you tried to kill Polly without much reservation. And by my metric, Polly must be the least defensive of the three. Surely you want to see the people who've ruined your life suffer, right? If that's the case, I'm not your enemy. I'm your ally, Devon. Ally? Exactly. Like I said, come here. I came here to tear down Olympo. And I'm well along the process of doing it. Just a bit further and you'll see your brothers and father squirm as their company fails, falls into ruin. Isn't that ideal? Don't you want revenge? For a moment, Devon didn't say anything. That's really not his style. But his hand trembled. His face was flushed with emotion. Then he took a deep breath out. He was past it. I didn't have any feelings toward my past family. That includes love. That includes hate. People can do whatever they want toward them. They can help out. They can hurt them. It won't sway me. You can't be serious. You take me for somebody who jokes around a lot? That's not... After everything that family did to you, you're okay with letting them stay in power. You're fine to just let them continue destroying other lives. I put the Dysmas in the past. They don't motivate me anymore. If anything, I should be grateful to them. It was my time in their household that led me to where I am today. Serving a higher cause. Doing actual good. Yeah, my initial motivation read on Devon was more accurate than I could have ever imagined. This was good. I've gotten him away from talking about shooting me in the face. <laughs> he was now discussing things like blame and better causes. At this point I felt I had a pretty good download on Devon. He was traumatised and made feel to feel worthless by the Dysmans. Something happened. He was excommunicated from the family. Then broken he was pick up picked up by Aisha and brainwashed into being a little killer servant. I wonder where she got that idea. Anyways, he wasn't being motivated by any semblance of logic at this point. He wasn't even being motivated by orders, I had to guess. His crusade was a self-destructive attack in response to a clash between his own beliefs and those that had been ingrained in him. Were it not these five targets he was choosing to blame, I suspect he might have taken it out on himself. Anyways, this meant that most of the standard bargaining techniques I had up my sleeve were dead and moot. I could think of exactly one way to stop Devon from putting a bullet in my skull. I had to break him out of his devotion to Aisha. Normally I'd have no chance of doing that in a single conversation, but Devon was already acting on his own, already off kilter. If there was ever a chance to break through to him, this was it. A greater good. You're referring to Governor Aisha, correct? Killing for her? Devon squinted his eyes. Yeah, that's right. Governor Aisha was going to make the city a better place, a place worth being proud of. She was using me to do it, until you stepped in. You blackmailed her with those photos. You made her lose faith in me. Now, now I have nothing. Whoa, whoa, Devon. You don't have nothing. Yes, I do. I gave everything to Miss Aisha's cause. Not your life. Not yet, at least. And so long as you're still standing, you can find new things to live for. I mean, look at me. I... I lost everything. I fell into a pit of extreme despair. And look at me now. Better than ever. Being held at gunpoint. Valid. Look, my point is you can still do good in this world. I know you want to, or else you wouldn't have even be hearing me out. Honestly, I think it's a good thing Aisha let you go. Annoyance tend to outright hostility. And how exactly do you figure that? Because your life should be given to a good cause. And Governor Aisha is anything but that. Shut up. Governor Aisha is making Panthea a better place. Is that right? Okay. How? Huh? How is she making Panthea a better place? Give me a specific policy details. Tell me how those actual policies will improve the city substantially for the majority of its citizens. To the point that it justifies the actions taken up to this point and the risks that they pose. That's... Look, I'm not smart about all that stuff. It's completely not the point. Aisha is co cooperating with Olympo. She's keeping people like your father and brothers in power. Is that for the best? What about the duets? She's allowing them to exist. Hell, she's worked hand in hand with them. Dangerous criminals. Ones who don't give a shit about the good of the city. Necessary evils. She's fixing this election. And yet she'll still use you to assassinate potential enemies. Only a few. Only a few, huh? 
Right, because the cock robin killings are largely consisted of Ariane planting fake evidence on unrelated cases, right? Yeah. Alright, so what happens to those cases? Huh? Well, obviously they can't get solved if they're the work of the cock robin killings. How many dangerous criminals were let, kept, let free keeping this myth of yours alive? It has to be done. Why? Working with Olympo, allowing the duets to roam, handling threats, it's all in the effort of eliminating conflict. Conflict is what gets in the way of progress. Conflict is the enemy. Conflict is the base of democracy. Your whole premise is backwards, allowing titans like Olympo and the duets to roam unfettered, killing people. You're not eliminating conflict. People are still being harmed by these practices and trying to fight it. What you're doing is removing the ability to resist, thus removing the conflict. That's, you know, we're getting into semantics here. My point is, I get it. Conflict can be painful. It can lead to truly disastrous results, believe me. But it's also human. If conflict is absent, then things go unopposed. Power is unchallenged. You're basically saying that the, that the best, the ones who currently wield power, they deserve to shape Panthea how they wish. That's what your father Odin Dysma believes. Is that what you believe? Okay, okay. Let's say for a second you're right. There are downsides to democracy. In a dictatorship, which is what you're supporting, you do get things done faster. Sometimes you need strength to make change. Yes, exactly. To make change. What change has there been recently, exactly? There's a bunch of changes that have been happening. A, a bunch more coming. You know the real deal of dictatorships? Of giving someone too much power? Because the truth is, most people can't wield that power responsibly. Even if they think they can, once they have it, all bets are off. You know, before Aisha, there was another person who tried this whole faux dictatorship racket. His name was Zahak. Know of him? I got a blank look. I had to assume Devon didn't. Yeah, well, he also thought he knew what was best for the city. He was a political theorist, see? And he had a lot of thoughts about what would do the most good for the most people. When he was in power, the city changed massively. It was transformed from a shithole what we see today, just in the years he was around. See, exactly. You need power to make change. Hmm. Well, there's certainly an argument about Zahak's morality, how much we can judge him. But I'm not interested in him. I'm interested in his apparent successor, Aisha. What exactly is her vision for the city? One without conflict or strife, one that supports the little guy. You mean one without conflict that opposes her? Does propping up Olympo support the little guy? You're not... Shut up. Aisha's not changing anything. She's maintaining the status quo. She's maintaining her power. Real change takes time. It takes careful deliberation. I just had time. I just had many, many years of that conflict. And it hasn't gotten much done. Stop talking. You know, I find your hatred of conflict interesting. I assume you got that from Aisha. What's it to you? Well, I wonder if that philosophy has anything to do with what Aisha's hus with Aisha's husband's death. The result of callous gang war. That would certainly bias you toward thinking an imperfect peace is preferable to a bloody war. Except few who live in Panthea would currently call times peaceful. And maybe that's what motivates the Chief of Police Ariane. Maybe that motivated Aisha for a time. Maybe when she got into politics she had ideals. But whatever those were, she has long since abandoned them. Shut up! Devin, think about it. What has she really been doing? If she's only taking the absolute necessary measures for a greater good, then okay. I understand that. But in that case, why does she have such a humongous sum of cash tucked away for personal use? What? When I met with her as Locke, I tried seeing what my bluffing could uncover. Turns out my hunters were spot on. She all but admitted to the fact that she's been stockpiling cash for herself for a long time. Which makes sense, you know. She's already got the will of the people, a rigged election, an assassin on her side. She doesn't really need Olympo's help. If she wanted, she could make moves against them. But she doesn't because she's forgotten whatever noble cause she began to fight for, if she ever had one. I'm gonna shoot, keep talking, and I'll shoot. I can't claim to know perfectly what's going on in her mind, Devon. But if you had to ask if I if you had to ask me, she's become blinded with her own power. Obsessed with keeping her cash, her position, her title. So obsessed she no longer knows why she clings to it. I don't think it's pure greed. And if it was, she'd be enjoying it a lot more than she does. Clearly she works a lot and has a lot of care in her job. But at some point, Devon, she lost perspective. Getting this power is no longer a means to an end. It was an end itself. That's why she finds every single angle possible and exploits it. Why she goes over the top, kills any slight threat, takes any beneficial deal. She is a monarch defending her throne, plain and simple. I've warned you. I'm warning you. That's why she's so opposed to change. Any change might threaten her reign. Sure, she might tell you how. She might tell herself that she's going somewhere with all of this. 
But if serving some ideal always comes second to maintaining every inch of power she has, nothing will ever be done. Shut up, shut up, just be quiet. You don't know anything about her. Don't try and give me all this shit when all you've ever been was against Miss Aisha. You never once believed in her. You're just tearing her down senselessly. Devon, please, think for a moment. Why are you defending her? Actually, think about it. What made you so loyal to her? No, no. You're lying. You're a liar, that's what you do. Your whole MO is to manipulate people, to bend them to your will. Why should I trust a word that comes out of your mouth? This is all... This is all just bullshit trying to corrupt me. Corrupt you? Devon, hear yourself. Miss Aisha, she... She gave me a second chance. She saw the good in me, the use in me, that nobody else ever would. She depended on me. She needed me. She's not what you're saying. She's kind. She cares about people. You don't know how much she grieved when Secretary Ghani died. You don't know the struggles she went through. Secretary Ghani died? If you're saying that all this time she was manipulating me? It can't be. That'd mean that all these years I've been... Devon didn't have the strength to finish that thought. Devon, you're right to be angry. You're a victim in all of this, but you're also wrong. Nobody else would see the good in you? You only think that because your only real reference was the Dysmas. I promise, if you told your whole honest story to another person, they'd sympathise with you and try to help you out. And quit with all this talk about use. People aren't tools. The only use someone is, is to, needs is to themselves. They need to be able to use their body to live a good life. End of story. You only think this way because you've been warped by that asshat Odin into thinking that people are objects. But that ain't bullshit. And I know you already know this. That's not... You can't be... You know I'm right. You just don't want to accept it. Your mind is trying to trick you right now, Devon. To make you doubt yourself. To question what I'm saying. To refuse the truth that you know. Because you know what? The hardest thing in life is to admit when you're wrong. Actually changing your mind takes strength. I know you think that after everything you've done, all these years you've wasted, and if Aisha isn't who she says she is, then all of that has gone to waste. That if that's true, that if it's true what I'm saying, then you're actually a bad person. That you have nothing left. But that's not true. For one, you're a victim here, just like every other person. And the idea that since you don't have anything to cling onto now, that because you've spent your life it's been so long working for Aisha that breaking away from that is useless. That idea is just the fallacy of sunk costs. An extreme example, I'll admit, but that's all it is. The, pal the past, no, your past doesn't really matter. The actions you took aren't tattooed on your soul. Life isn't some competition where you have to put all, all your years into good use. It doesn't matter one bit if the last few years you've been in a coma or a deranged serial killer or saving lives as a humanitarian. In the past you might as well be a completely different person. The only thing, the only thing at all that matters now is how you choose to proceed from here. What you choose to do after this. If, if you do what you earnestly believe is the right thing, then nothing else matters. Not who you're of use to, not what you've done in your past, not what others believe, because you'll be doing the right thing. End of story. Kevin's aim at my head wasn't faltering in the slightest. His expression was stone cold, unflinching. But as he locked eyes with me, I could see the battle within him. And then I realized the truth that I really didn't like. In the end, I couldn't force him to reach the truth. This is something he'd have to come to himself. I get it. You think I'm just some sleazy trickster? That I'm saying anything I can to save my own skin? That nothing I've said is genuine? That's how you're trying to justify ignoring everything I've said. Okay. Then don't listen to me. Don't listen to Odin, or Aisha, or anyone. Just listen to your own heart. Earnestly thinking about what you want to do? What you think is right? I mean, you've worked for Aisha far longer than I have. You probably know more. If Aisha lost her way, then you should be able to tell. If you think about it without averting negative thoughts. I just want you to really consider all this by yourself. And if you come to the conclusion that I'm wrong, that Aisha's still worthy of support, that I'm some, some scumbag that deserves to die, then shoot me right here, right now. I can't stop you. But, make sure that decision is actually yours. If you're going to kill me, you at least owe me the assurance that you're killing me yourself. I noticed the pistol beginning to sway slowly. Devon had stopped looking at me. He said his eyes were clenched shut. I could see his tears getting through his eyelids though. Technically he'd taken his eyes off me. The idea of making a move now that he wasn't paying as much attention did cross my mind. However, even if his eyes are closed, his ears sure weren't. And I felt as though if he caught me taking advantage of this moment, he probably really would just shoot me. Instead we just stood there. I waited with bated breath. Come on Devon, you can be better. I've given it my all with that spiel. Break free. Devon opened his eyes once more. 
and he turned around and began pacing away. Yeah. Oh, thank God. I really thought I was dead just there. Like, I had no faith that that was actually going to work. I was really just throwing out anything I thought might placate him. Jesus Christ, I almost had a heart attack. Whew. Damn, I was pretty good at this, huh? Devin circled back around, pacing. Thank you. Really, thank you, Devin. You're doing the right thing. I'm glad. What should I do now? Huh? There's nothing left for me. What should I... What do I do? What should you do, huh? Don't you think that's a question you should answer yourself? Devin looked at me for a moment. Then he looked down, lost in contemplation. Finally, he looked back up, a glint of determination in his eye. Got it. Okay, good. What'd you settle on? If you uh, don't mind me asking. Aisha. I'm not content to just walk away from everything. I need to speak with her. I need to figure out... No, she needs to answer for everything. I'll figure out what to do from there. I nodded. That sounded pretty good. Sounds like a plan. I'm not going to thank you. That's fine. As far as I'm concerned, the only reason I'm not killing you is because I don't see a good reason to. And I'd probably be caught. I still don't like you. I still don't think you're a good person. Understood. You tell me to try and ignore my spirit? To ignore the misleading voices that really ask myself why I'm doing what I'm doing. If it's the right thing. I think maybe you should do that too. But oh, don't worry, I already went through that. I'm doing this to tear down the corruption of Panthea. And to make a little cash all the while. <laughs> Anyways, like it or not, I think you did help me get over something that I think I've been grappling with for a while. So I guess I probably should warn you. Warn me? Me coming here, this wasn't a spur of the moment thing. I mean, yes, on my own, I've been looking to kill you. Or at least three of your identities. But I wasn't, I was sent here by an augmented voice. I was given the location and told that if I shot you and looked around your apartment, I'd get what I wanted. They also said that they had other ways of handling you. Really? Shit, the moves against me were becoming far more explicit. At this rate, it was only a matter of time. I don't know who this person is, but you have an enemy, Mercury. One far more dangerous than me. Thank you, Devin. That means a lot. Of course, I knew that already. But happy to know I could pin this particular life-threatening encounter on them as well. Alright, well... Devin looked around awkwardly. I guess I'll get going now. Uh, okay. Stay safe. You too. And with this strange, strained encounter between two strangers over with, Devin left my apartment. I was alone again. Safe for the time being. I collapsed onto my couch. Was this the closest I'd come to death? No, that time in the manjit was probably still my closest shave. See, how can you be Thane then? He said he was Thane, but he can't be Thane. Still, this is pretty bad in its own right. I was really running out of time. I had to start tying up loose ends immediately. I mean, if the god had my apartment... Wait a second. How'd they figure out my location? I'd been very fucking thorough in keeping it a secret. What the hell? I racked my brain for a possible answer. They must have learned it recently. Else something else would have done been done sooner. Oh, motherfucker. Went over to my laptop and took out the USB. I grabbed a nearby knife and tried to pry it open. Sure enough, mechanical things. Okay, it turns out I didn't actually know what a tracking device looked like. But I was pretty fucking sure that this is how they located me. Motherfucker. Who the hell do they think they were messing with? Did they really plan this whole thing out? Maybe it's just in the mix of an insurance policy and a happy accident. I couldn't be sure. All I knew for certain was that... What I'd already known. I was dealing with a pro. What was even on this stupid USB anyway? This USB that was stolen from Olympo. I checked my laptop and it looked like the file had successfully been transferred. I opened it up. Huh. Despite taking that obnoxiously long te time to transfer, it appeared to be a simple text file. A simple text file with an encrypted lock. Fucking... I didn't have time for this. Knowing what I knew, was it even worth opening? Ah, fuck it, I was too curious. I'd just be fast. Oh, by the way, this hacking puzzle has yellow tiles. We're doing hacking puzzles again? God damn it. You don't have to be scared of them. They're actually kind of helpful when you think of it. For one, they'll always be live. Also, the eight tiles surrounding them, left, right, up and down, diagonals, Exactly four of them will be dead. Isn't it neat info gathering tool? Alright, get to it. You should probably uh, also know that this hacking puzzle has red tiles. Last color variant, I promise. Yellow, red, and blue, that's it. Anyways, uh, red tiles, explanation, right? So there's going to be some red tiles with numbers on them, and some without numbers on them. A red tile with a number on them functions like any other tile with a number on them. However, a red tile without a number on it must be a live tile within the numbered region of the numbered red tile. What? Basically, unnumbered red tiles must live inside the regions of numbered red tiles. I see. It's pretty simple, trust me. I don't even remember how to do this. It's been so long since I've done this. We did this right at the beginning and never again. So you know I'm going to cut here, right? As I try and figure this out, because 
I don't even remember the, what the puzzle is. I don't remember how it works. But we'll figure it out. I've been sitting here scratching my head for a while now, and I just cannot figure out why this doesn't work. I mean, I've already lost all my coins because I've tried, so I could just skip it and not lose anything, but at the same time, I feel like I've got the answer here. I'm gonna skip it, but you tell me if you think, if you can, anyone watching right now, if you see where I fucking made a mistake, please, please tell me, because it looks perfectly right to me. I mean, I must have fucked it up somehow, but I can't see how. I can count, you know, I, I promise I can count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, that's right. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It doesn't have to be in a straight line, right? They never said they had to be in a straight line. I mean, you can do that. That's a straight line. And it's still, you know, correct. You know? <sighs> Alright, I'm skipping. Tell me if you see something wrong with this, though. I know it's probably something really fucking obvious. Oh well. It's a bunch of gibberish. A text file full of gibberish. The only decipherable bit, bit was at the top. Use the N key. N key? The how? Was this some sort of cipher? My man be mind began trying to wrap the pieces together. Then I just shook my head. No. Thinking about it a bit closer, this whole th if this whole thing was really was a trap, then this whole mess of letters is likely meant to stall me for long enough for Devon to get here. That could have been the reason for the encoded block. And if it wasn't always meant to be a trap, then I doubted there'd be anything useful. Whichever the case, I just need to get ready. The next step of the plan should be kicking into action any minute now. I was a bit concerned about how my opponent was going to get more brazen and dangerous. It felt entirely possible that they would screw things up further. But at this point, I was in too deep. I was already in the middle of fulfilling JC's last wish. Her last request that she entrusted to me. Either Panthea's god would kill me, or I'd burn it down first. Gold key collected. I have nothing to say here. All I have is my respect for Mercury. Mercury is an elite breed. Mercury reminds me of myself. Maybe you are Mercury. I mean, they can come off as anyone, man or woman. Anyway, we've got a gold key, which means we can continue this side. Um, Devon's side, which we'll do in the next episode. Very exciting. Shame about the puzzle though, I swear to god that was right. Tell me how I messed it up. Hope you guys enjoyed it, thanks for watching, thanks again for me, and I'll see you in the next one.